Hi, this is Debbie McAllister, and this is Light Up Your Worth. Welcome to today's episode. It's just me today that had come in. I've been uh, mulling around a few things, and I wanted to just come on and share those thoughts with you. Um, I wanted to dig into expectations. It's kind of a big, uh, meaty topic, and it's been on my mind. I had a um, conversation with my adult niece, um, and it triggered a few things. And through our just lovely, heartfelt conversation, had a couple conversations with a couple of our guests here over this past week, and some of them just really, really hit me. So as I was, I was preparing to come on, I could feel actually um, emotions already start to come up about this topic. And so I thought, no, I probably should uh, record the episode, but I'm going to go ahead because I'm feeling pretty vulnerable. And so I'm going to talk about expectations. So what are the expectations? You know, at first I thought I was going to talk and dig into expectations of like, how do we manage others' expectations of us? I started to think about that. You know, I've recently uh, relocated uh, to Flagstaff, Arizona. And over the last seven years, I've lived in four states. I've worked in uh, multiple organizations, healthcare organizations. I've worked in a psych hospital. I've worked in um, acute care, uh, outpatient, et cetera, big systems. And expectations has always been something that we've always taught in, in helping others and helping leadership and even in my own coaching business Mm -hmm. and managing my own expectations of myself. And I started thinking about some of those decisions that I've made over the last couple of years. And I think how much of others expectations of myself have played into this on where I'm at, what I do, what I want to do. And is it really holding me back? So I've been pondering this and thinking about it in my meditations and some journaling or uh, a little bit of walking with my dog and Lily, you guys all know Lily. (laughs) And this is the first time you hear, you haven't heard her in the background, but every once in a while you'll hear her talk. But so if you had free choice in your decisions, what would you do? And I thought to myself, who actually has free choice? Really? Sometimes I think we think we do. And, but do we really, do you really speak your own truth? And how does that fit in with expectations? So speaking your truth, you know, share what you believe without judgment. So how many of us actually do that? I thought I had put aside with all of the work that I've been doing over the last 20 years um, in spiritual practices. Um, I've shared that in the, when the original things with raw and vulnerable episode, and I've done a lot of energetic healing subconscious. I've done uh, coaching. I've been coached. I've uh, been, I've had therapy. I've, I've combined it all. I've read books. I've read a lot of books. I've gone to school. Um, I mean, went to school late in life or finished late in life. I should say from 56 and started thinking about this, speaking your own truth, sharing what you believe. Do you actually really share what you believe or do you hold it close? When I thought about that, I thought about a big circle. If I, if I drew a circle and then I drew two other circles, and what I started to think about is in that very middle section, there is a part of you that is your super closest people. And then you have the rest of the world and uh, your good friends, your colleagues, your uh, online communities, and then you have your outside the rest of your um, rest of the world. So even on social media, when you're posting your opinion these days, you know, can you really speak your truth on what you really believe? There's a lot of really controversial issues happening, continue to happen over the last two years. And are you actually sharing, um, 
sharing what you believe on those subjects. Now, this isn't a podcast about those subjects. I have some really strong beliefs and I don't think they're really uh, appropriate for this space. So I'm going to keep them to myself, right? Because it doesn't fit into what I'm trying to, um, not trying, what I am doing with the podcast, which is really to uplift and provide inspiration and joy and resources to be able to do that. But today I was thinking about the expectations over the last several years and some of the decisions I've made of my life and this last relocation for here in uh, Flagstaff. And as I'm trying to articulate my words to speak to this, I had to ask myself if I had free choice in the matter, what would I do? Would I move here? Would I start over? Is this where I would pick? And I thought to myself, yes, this is my free choice to relocate, to start anew. Um, You know, I was, I've been, it feels pretty recent still, but it's been two years ago since I uh, left a marriage a little over two years ago and the the following uh, divorce that happened. And I started thinking to myself with all of the changes that have Uh, the outcomes of that and all of the um, opportunities that I've had to really go even deeper into what I thought had already been healed. And I thought it was already healed when I started the podcast. And what I've realized is that I had more to go that like so many in the last two years, things that you didn't really realize were still there, some big T's or little T's, traumas. And how did that fall into my decisions, my own expectations of myself is what I've realized is the biggest. You know, I've been pretty self-directed and motivated most of my life. I've reached some goals. I've overcome probably stuff that I made other decisions that got in my way, but, you know, because we do have expectations, right. Of our, our families, our parents, our, our cultural environment, even our communities or our cities of where we grew up, what was acceptable, what was not. And when you think about those expectations are that, is that ruling your life? And it was kind of triggered by where I wanted to live. Do I feel freer when I'm not surrounded by people that I've known my whole life? Do I feel freer? Is it their expectations or was it my own expectations? Maybe you can relate to this. Maybe you've made decisions and they didn't always come out the way you thought. I've had a lot of those the last couple of years that caused a lot of pain. And so I wanted to, um, sorry, (laughs) I wanted to read something that really resonated with me and it's um, a Garth Brooks song. It's really pretty. It's older. It's called The Dance. If you can go listen to it on on, uh, YouTube or Amazon Music. But looking back on the memory of the dance we shared underneath the stars above, for a moment, all the world was right. How could I have known that you'd ever say goodbye? And now I'm glad I didn't know the way it would all end, the way it would all go. Our lives are better left to chance. I could have missed the pain, but I had to miss the dance. You know, and now I'm glad I didn't know, skipped a couple of verses here, the way it all would end, the way it all would go. Our lives are better left to chance. I could have missed the pain, but I would have to miss the dance. 
So I'm sure if you look back on your own expectations of life, the expectations that you've had of yourself, that you've had in balancing with those around you, and what does it hold you back from doing? You know, coming through this, and I've made some pretty big changes in decisions of my life. And I've realized is that I had expectations that I carried with me that weren't really aligned with who I am. And yet I did it. And not only did I cause pain for myself, but I caused pain for hurting other people. And that can bring guilt. And Guilt doesn't really serve a purpose, I think, other than to give you an opportunity to go and dig into what that is. So if I had to do it all over again, would I? Would you? I would say yes. Because the dance, the dance was worth it. And all of these decisions, whether it was with love or love or love, I think that's the biggest opportunity, right? When we dig into what is our own worth based upon, and it's love, love for ourselves, love for others. So do you really value yourself? Tough questions I've had to ask. And so I want to ask you, if you're able to love yourself and feel your own worth, and I welcome you to be gentle on yourself. If I had any uh, lessons that I've learned, and that is to be gentle on yourself, release that burden of judgment, and know that Wherever you are, whatever decisions you've made, you did the best you could with what you had at the time. And when I think about why the podcast is so aligned with who I am and why I'm so inspired by all of you, is that on this journey, whether your spiritual growth, your personal development, trying to be a person better than you were yesterday, is that you have resources of people who can help you because really it's, we do the work. We're the ones who have to sit here and think about what was the lesson, you know, what am I going to take away from this? And so I'm hoping that some of those wonderful, amazing people that I've met will be able to do that with you. But what I've realized for myself with these expectations comes the other flip side of the hand is like, an acceptance of where you are at this point in your life. If you had asked me when I was young that this would be where I am, no way, right? I mean, I was in a 20 year relationship from age 18, went off on this, the second phase of my life as a single mom, truly single mom. And had this, uh, all these incredible experiences. And then I find myself in this phase. An acceptance of where you are at this point in my life, the acceptance of where you are in your life. I think we have these unrealistic expectations and sometimes we're floating around and it all kind of falls in place. Sometimes we just fall asleep in our life. I've seen it in my own life. I've seen it in others. And one of the questions I'm asking myself now, you know, are what are the possibilities in this new phase as I start over? And am I going to stop myself from feeling happy or joy or bliss? Bliss. Oh, doesn't that just sound delicious? Don't you just want to roll around in bliss and 
happy dance to it or slow dance to it under the stars. <laughs> I live up in, you know, the Ponderosa Pines. Wouldn't it be lovely to be outside on a warm summer night and just dance under the stars thinking about the possibilities? So I'll just ask you, what are your possibilities? What are your possibilities? When you are 95 years old, what will you want to say about your life? What will you want to say about your life? I want to be able to say that I faced my fears, my worst fears, stepped into those areas that scared me the most about myself. And I kept going. Even when I was pushed down. And then I loved and loved and loved. And then I was a kind person. And it wasn't based upon any expectations of myself or anybody else, expectations of me. So be gentle on yourself. Release all that burden of judgment and allow your yourself time. Time to feel, probably over feeling right now, but allow yourself time to feel so that you can heal and release. You know, don't, don't bottle it up in your body. You know, our body remembers and hold on to it. So in doing the work, know that as you heal yourself, because life continues, new things happen, lots of things happening out in the world right now, that as you spend the time to feel it and heal it, and then release it. With any of the, the, the ways that, that we're highlighting here in the show, but healing yourself, knowing that it heals everyone around you, your family, your friends, your community, your city, your state, your country, the world. It sends that light up into the world and I want to say that I love you. I love all of you. And I hope that you will step into allowing yourself time to heal and to feel because getting on a mic when you're feeling really emotional and thinking about those expectations that I had of where I would be at this point in my life. And now it's different. And you know what? That's okay because I am happy. May not sound it at this moment, <laughs> but I am. I am happy. And it's taken time to heal and to be quiet and to spend a lot of time with others, without others, I should say, um, and coming up for air and then going back down and allowing myself to feel. One of my favorite things to do is to spend like one week in a month, whether it's a whole, both days or one day and I call it my pajama day and I just kind of putter I putter around maybe I'll do something some self-care maybe I'll throw on a facial mask or paint my toes or clean out a drawer you know decluttering deorganizing something delete old emails you know do something that not top priority but it makes me feel good to be able to do that sometimes it involves you know, just lighting a candle and reading a book. So I wanted to remind you that you are worth it. You are worth this time. You are worth this time. Step into your light and feel the worth that is all around you. Simply by being born, you were worth it. And think about all the possibilities that are coming to you. And accept this gift of acceptance and where you are at this point in your life. 
and speak your truth. That throat chakra, allowing things to come up through your whole chakra systems with your roots, your sacral and coming all the way up and allow it to come up and out. You know, those expectations that we have of ourselves don't have to get stuck down there and we can release it. So thanks for listening to me ramble today. I don't, I thought I was talking about expectations and acceptance and being gentle on yourself and to know that you are allowed to follow your own path. It's not supposed to be a like, if one thing that this podcast has really shown me with all these amazing guests is that we are all very different. We could be exactly the same, do the exact same things. And yet we are all very uniquely different. And within each of us is a resistance. You were born with it. You just have to step into it and know that the release, releasing the crying is healthy. It releases things. And that there are resources here to help you help me, uh, you know, as we're on this journey together, as I continue to heal. So sending you much, much love and sunshine and a really big emoji hug <laughs> and know that I'm thinking of you. So be gentle on yourself. See you soon.